What's up guys, hope you're having a good day. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the stock market, which is obviously a little bit different to what I usually talk about. Now I need to start off by saying I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. I am a total noob, I am a rookie, I am a clueless idiot, I have no idea what I'm talking about. But, I felt like I needed to make this video because today I've been a little bit triggered. When I go on Twitter or I look at the recommended videos I get on YouTube, all I'm seeing is people tweeting, you know, buy the dip, I've got diamond hands, buy, buy, buy. You know, we've had a sell-off in the S&P 500, sell-off in the NASDAQ, sell-off in all stocks, sell-off in Bitcoin this week. And I keep seeing online, diamond hands, buy the dip. And I think this is really, really bad advice. And I keep seeing it, and it's frustrating me, so I want to make this video... To kind of show you guys some stuff which may make you just take a little bit a bit little bit of caution when it comes to you know crypto and the stock market at the moment and i hope you appreciate that if you do please hit the like button and if you know this video gets a positive reaction lots of likes lots of comments i'll make more content like this so like i said i'm not an expert but i have spent a long time learning technical analysis and i'm going to be focusing on technical analysis in this video to give us some clues as to what ha may happen in the stock market next. So obviously this week we've seen you know big sell-offs in the S&P 500, crypto and the Nasdaq. And you have to look towards the Nasdaq and the S&P 500 which are you know you know they represent the US economy, US stock market. You have to look at these like the canary in the coal mine in terms of when these you know, when, when, when the S&P 500 is very strong, other financial markets and other assets are more likely to be strong as well. And when they're weak, other financial assets, indexes around the world, different, you know, different stock markets around the world are likely to be very weak. Show you what I mean. If we go into index funds, we can see that we've got, you know, different index funds from around the world. You know, Australian index fund, British, Germany, French, Japanese if we just cycle through them, none of them had a very good day yesterday. You know, they were all red days. They, you know, they, they, there's German, you know, the German DAX, French, French stock market, Australian, Japanese. We got UK. There we go. There's the FTSE. Every stock market around the world had a bad day yesterday. And that's because everything's correlated. We look at the S&P 500, you know, which represents basically the US economy. We look at that and that tells us how everything else is likely to perform. Everything's correlated to the S&P 500, which means it doesn't matter whether you're interested in Dogecoin, Ripple, Domino's Pizza stock, McDonald's stock, Tesla. It doesn't matter what it is. Nothing really tends to perform that well if the S&P 500 is performing bad. So we look at the S&P 500 to give us clues as to what everything else is likely to do next. There are no exceptions. So the first thing that I want to focus on is trends. And there's something very interesting going on with the S&P 500 at the moment. This is the S&P 500 chart that we're looking at. Now generally speaking... Financial assets, stocks, cryptocurrencies, commodities, it doesn't matter what it is. They tend to move in one of three patterns, generally speaking. They're either in an uptrend, which you can see here by the S&P 500. Clear uptrend, not there, but for the most part an uptrend. Or they're in a downtrend. Now, S&P 500 is very rarely in a downtrend. But if we find an asset that likes to trend down a lot, Ripple's always a good one. This seems to be in a permanent downtrend. We can see that if we go to the daily time frame on Ripple, this would be a downtrend, right? The opposite of the S&P 500. You know, price action steadily moves down in this trending pattern like this. So we've seen uptrend, we've seen a downtrend. The third pattern that a financial asset will move through is called consolidation and we can see that on the amazon chart you see this sideways price action is neither in an uptrend nor a downtrend and price when it moves in sideways action 
tends to get stuck in a channel. And we can see that by these blue lines we've drawn here. Notice how the price of Amazon just basically bounces around in this price channel. And what will happen eventually is that it'll reach one of these levels represented by the blue line. And it'll either break below and you'll see price action move very, very aggressively below that. And it will basically change trend. It will establish a downtrend. Or it will break up. And price will go to the moon and it will uh, it'll break out into an uptrend. But those are the three trends. You've got the uptrend, you've got the downtrend, and you've got consolidation. So a big part of trading is understanding what trend an asset is in and trading with the trend. As an example, you look at the S&P 500. You would not have wanted to short the S&P 500 or bet against the, the S&P 500 during this uptrend because it's only moving up the market's only going to be moving away from you which is not what you want you want to be trading with the trend right but a big part of trading is spotting signs when the trend is about to change so that you can get into account the trend as early as possible or not get caught in a situation where again the market is moving away from you because if something's in an uptrend you want to be going with that uptrend. You want to be buying. If something's in a downtrend, you don't want to be left holding the bag. You want to be selling or shorting. So if we look at the S&P 500 as an example, we can see when trend changes. There are certain things we can see in charts that give us some clues as to when the trend might be changing. And when the trend does change... What you tend to see is violent moves in the opposite direction. So, for example, if we look back at the COVID dump on the S&P 500, there was a clear trend change here off this sell-off from an uptrend, a nice steady uptrend, to a downtrend. And as soon as this downtrend gets established, you have this really violent sell-off. And obviously, you don't want to be held, you know, left holding the bag if that happens. This is the daily time frame. One of the ways that you can spot a trend change is from something called a double top. Trends are basically constructed from a series of highs and a series of lows. And when you get a double top, it can suggest that the trend is flipping from either an uptrend to a downtrend. Let me show you what I mean. Highs and lows are basically measured from new highs being formed above previous highs. So as an example on the S&P 500, if we take a look here, see all these new peaks. You've got a new peak there, you've got a new peak there, you've got a new peak there, and it just makes new peaks all the way up, right? Even this one that's very tight above this, this peak here. You can see if you follow the dotted line, this one is just a little bit higher than this one. These are called higher highs, and when you're in a strong uptrend, the price action of an asset just continually punches in higher highs. This is a higher high than this. This peak is a higher high than this. This peak is a higher high than this. This peak is a higher high like this. And it keeps going and going and going. You also want to be printing what are called higher lows. So don't pay any attention to these long skinny thin lines here. They're called wicks. For a trend to, to, to basically stay intact, you want the bottom side of these candles to be higher than the previous low and that shows that the uptrend is still intact so let me show you what i mean just like with the peaks we look at the lows so for example this low is higher than this low so that's called a higher low this low higher than this low higher low higher low higher low but then look at what happens very recently on the s p 500 Back on the 29th of January, we broke structure. Look at this uptrend. Okay, higher low, higher low, higher low. And then all of a sudden, look at what we get here. And notice how the thickness of the candles change as well. The shape of these candles is very different from these candles. And you also get a spike in volume. Right? Different looking candles, spike in volume. This is notable on the 27th of January. What's also notable is you get a lower high. For the first time in this uptrend, this low is lower than this low. 
which is the first indication that the trend might be changing. Today, obviously, we had a very, very red red candle, uh, you know, on today on the S and P five hundred. But the 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 amount that the S and P five hundred was down today is not as significant as the shape of these candles. This is a textbook double top, and a textbook double top often indicates a change in trend. Let me just show you what I mean. If we go to Google, what is a double top? We look at their definition. Double top and double bottoms are reversal chart patterns observed in the technical analysis of financial trading markets of stocks, commodities, currencies, and other assets. So if we look at this, you've got your double top there, which looks exactly like this, right? So what this is basically, what a double top basically does is form a, what's called, you know, a high or a low. So you can see it all the way along, right? You've got a double top here. That's a clear high. Double top there, clear higher high. Double top there, you know, low, lower high. But you get what I'm saying. Higher high, higher high, all the way up. There's a double top there. You get the higher high. Beautiful double top there. Signal a trend change. But this is very notable because you've got the higher low to break the structure and then you've got a new double top which could be indicating a lower high, right? Because you've got your high, your high, your high and then you've got your lower high. So this looks like you could be getting a trend change where you've got uptrend all the way up with, you know, this this is a period of consolidation there. But for the most part, all the way up. And now all of a sudden, you've got new lower high, double top indicating a lower high. Which means, if this is the new lower high, then this represents a trend change from the uptrend to the downtrend. So you can quite easily go from this to this. So when I see people talking about diamond hands, buy the dip online, very, very annoying to me because I don't see anyone talking about a potential trend change on the S&P 500. What's also very notable is the volume. You look at this. Look at how high this volume was on today's candle which was Thursday. So a new double top indicates something different might be going on and we've got the lower high. Now it's exactly like MMA. No one knows what's going to happen next but all we can do is try and make the best decision possible with the information we've got available. Lower high there, double top there and on top of that we've been on a fucking immense run up right. The S&P 500 up 70% since March, which is outrageous, especially in the current economic climate. It just doesn't make sense, right, from a fundamental point of view. So this is very notable to me. There is more, but wait, there's more. There's more. We're also printing bearish divergence on higher term time frames. Take a look at this little red arrow here on my RSI indicator. These arrows indicate bearish and bullish divergences. So Bearish and bullish divergences are very, very important. They're a really, really big part of technical analysis because the RSI that can show you bearish and bullish divergences stands for Relative Strength Index. It's basically an indicator that shows you the strength of a financial asset. It basically means that when you start to print bearish or bullish divergence on an RSI, it means that momentum is slowing down. So if you think about two teams of people right bears and bulls and bears are always trying to suppress price action and sell bulls are always trying to buy but it'll reach a point where one team gets tired and runs out of steam either we run out of buyers because they run out of money to throw at the market and keep it going up 
Bayers get tired of selling and pushing price down. They can't suppress it anymore. They run out of stuff to sell and then the price goes to the moon and the number of buyers outweigh the bears. Bearish and bullish divergence shows when momentum is starting to slow down. So if you get bullish divergence, it shows that the number of sellers is drying up. Number of people that want to sell is decreasing, which increases the probability that, you know, momentum is going to swing in favor of buyers price is going to go up if you have bearish divergence it basically means the number of people buying is running out is drying up bullish divergence represented by blue and green arrows on this rsi chart bearish divergence is represented by red and orange arrows take a look at what's happening here we've got bearish divergence on the daily time frame but what's more notable is bearish divergence on the weekly time frame the higher the time frame the higher the time frame the more reliable the data because the higher the time frame the more the charts have got data to basically plot out you know really good quality information bearish divergence on the weekly time frame on the s p 500 is a really 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 big issue because it tends to play out quite nastily a big percentage of the time these colored squiggly lines here are really notable they're exponential moving averages they're very important the yellow one's called the 8 ema the green's called the the 20 uh, the 13 ema the blue's called the 21 ema the purple or pink whatever the fuck you want to call it it's called the 55 ema and they act as support when price action is above these lines when it's below acts as resistance so as an example the s p 500 is not a great example because well, it only ever fucking goes up. But if we look at Bitcoin, as an example, we go to, say, the five-minute time frame. When the yellow, green, and blue uh, lines are below the purple, the purple acts as kind of like resistance to push price down. And you can see all the way along here. You know, here's a better example. All the way along, it's, it's pushing price down. When the yellow, the green, the blue line is above the purple, the 55 EMA, it acts as support as a safety net to push the price up. And we can see it happen here. And we can see it happen here, right? So what's very notable about the weekly chart on the S&P 500 is that we're very, very far away from the 55 exponential moving average hasn't been tested since all the way back in june and we're a very long way from that you know people were freaking out today over a market crash because the s p 500 dipped three percent you know we're still 11 percent off the 55 ema which means things can get real nasty before they get better and that's notable because look at these two red arrows here we are printing bearish divergence on the weekly time frame Look at what's happened if we backtest how the weekly time frame has reacted to bearish divergence in the past. It happened here. Look at this. This was the COVID dump back in February. Bearish divergence got printed on the 10th of February. And literally the next week we had the huge sell-off, the COVID dump where the stock market crashed. So that ain't good. Well, that tells me is last time we had bearish divergence printed on the weekly time frame, shit got really, 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 really bad. And so we need to be cautious here. Look at what happened before. So if we zoom in, bearish divergence, what happened? Price action came all the way down to touch the 55 exponential moving average. Bearish divergence again, price action came all the way down to test the 55 exponential moving average. Bearish divergence, price action came down to touch the 21 exponential moving average. Bearish divergence, price action again came down to touch the 55. Bearish divergence, price came down to touch the 21 EMA, right? Bearish divergence, didn't really play out. But the indicator is not going to get it right every time. But look at this, bearish divergence... Price action comes down to touch the 55 EMA. So the point I'm trying to make is the vast majority of the time when you print bearish divergence on a weekly time frame on the S&P 500, the vast majority of the time, at the very least, you retest the 55 EMA, 
which is this pink line here, which is about 10.5% from where we are now. Or you crash straight through it like we did back in the COVID dump and the world goes into financial meltdown again. Either way, it ain't fucking good. Generally speaking, 9 times out of 10, when you show bearish divergence on a weekly time frame, shit's going to get real bad, statistically speaking. Obviously, no one knows what's about to happen next, but I wanted to talk about these things in this video because, again, I'm getting triggered when I go on Twitter, seeing people telling others to buy the dip, show diamond hands, all this bullshit. The charts do not lie. And no one knows what's going to happen next, but at the very least, we should be cautious. Instead of fucking diamond hands, buy the dip. We should just be a little bit cautious because there's bearish divergence printed on the weekly time frame. And the daily is showing we may have just changed the trend. And what we do know about trend changes as illustrated here and as illustrated here. When the trend changes, you look at Bitcoin as an example. Actually, Amazon would probably be a, bit, be, a, be a better example. But when the trend changes, price moves very quick. So everyone today freaking out over a 3% drop. Shit could get a lot worse before it gets better. So I hope you found that useful. If you did, please hit the like button. Please subscribe if you haven't already. More importantly, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Do you enjoy this type of stuff? So, what happens next? Right? What happens next? How do we know what's going to happen next? Because I keep saying in this video, nobody knows what's going to happen next. So why is this video even useful? Why are you still watching, right? Well, technical analysis is a lot like betting on MMA. All we can do is look at all the information available to us and make the best decision possible with the information we've got available. So just like with MMA, we don't 100% know what's going to happen next, but... We do have some clues as to what happens next. And so by keeping an eye on things, we can get an early indicator of what's likely to happen next. So straight away at the moment, you want to have a lean, right? When we're researching MMA, we're watching two fighters. We're looking at both fighters' strengths and weaknesses. You start to develop a lean. Do you lean towards this guy or this guy? You want to do exactly the same here. You want to lean bearish or bullish right now. Because we've got a lower high, a double top indicating a, a double top indicating a lower high and a lower low. And we've got bearish divergence on the daily, two-day, weekly on the S&P 500. I'm leaning bearish. I'm on Team Bear right now. I'm on Team Bear right now. But we can pay attention to certain things that let us know what happens next. So where are they? What, what can happen next, right? So... There are a few things that happen next. Remember what we said. When price action is above the 55 exponential moving average represented by this, this pink line, the 55 EMA will act as a safety net. So it's not going to be easy for price to drop through here. What we're looking at is does price find support on this 55 EMA and then go into consolidation like we're seeing on Amazon? we look at the daily time frame on amazon notice how price action is constantly getting pushed back up above this 55 ema every time it drops below it 55 ema pushes the price back up do we see something like that happen now on the s p 500 where the 55 ema will act as support that could happen next the most important thing for me is now working out whether the trend has changed. So, see this double top here? If we draw a blue line, price action needs to get back up above this line in order for the uptrend to continue. If the price don't get back above this line, I'm talking about a candle close above this line, I believe the S&P 500 has changed trend to a downtrend. So that's pretty significant because if we do go like this and then this and then you get support on the 55 EMA and we bounce around in this area. We will be at big time risk of this breaking bearish, breaking downward below the 55 EMA. 
this new level here at 39 oh, 3925 3925 is so important until we break back above this line party time is over the uptrend is over and we're more likely training ch changing to a downtrend so this level is so important freeze it in your head 3925 on the e mini futures chart because if this is the new lower high being set the uptrend will look some or the, the new downtrend will look something like this and this is really 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 important to recognize because what you're going to see is say for example friday or monday you get a strong bounce in the S&P 500 right say for example we do this You're going to have everyone on fucking Twitter, everyone on, you know, pumping out YouTube videos, diamond hands, buy the dip, we're back, we're going to the moon, etc, etc, etc. When we know, because of the way trends move, if we look at something in a downtrend, if we go to Bitcoin, it's been in a downtrend for much of the last few hours. What you don't want to do is fall into the hurt mentality where every time you get a little rally... We're going back to the moon, right? Anytime you get these little spikes in price action here, we're going to the moon. Because we know in a downtrend, that is the only overall direction. It's fucking down. You don't want to fall into the trap. You wake up, you know, on Friday. You wake up on Friday or Monday. And the stock market's green. And you go online and everyone's saying, buy the dip, diamond hands. And you rush back in and get trapped. Because you know most likely outcome is we're just going to print a lower height because of this double top. And then roll over and confirm the downtrend. You don't want to fall into the diamond hands group. What you want to do, the smart thing to do is wait and see. Wait and see what happens. It might mean you'll miss out on some gains. It might mean you'll miss out on some gains. Because if we do that, do that, and then just do that fucking V-shape back to the moon, we close a candle above 3,925. We're off to the races and the uptrend continues. And you might miss out on some gains. However, we know that when the trend changes, especially on something like the S&P 500, price action can drop quickly and violently. So you're much better off waiting for confirmation than trying to buy the dip. Wait and see. Do we break 3,925? 3, 3, Put it in your head. I am not buying until I see the S&P 500 close above 3,925. 3, That's personally what I would do. And similarly, if we do this, boom, 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 close a candle there, but then we dip, this is a great buying opportunity because we know the uptrend is still intact because this will be a new higher high and the most likely outcome then is we'll be setting a new higher low relative to these lows and boom off to the moon but the trend will show you the next direction don't take the advice of these jabronis on twitter telling you buy the dip diamond hands look at the trend Look at this new key level, which is 3,925. Uh, 3, That's the key level. Unless we break 3,925, very likely we're in a downtrend and we're heading down and things are going to get nasty. With the bearish divergence, my bias leans towards a trend change and things getting nasty. But remember, we are sat on support on the 55 EMA, which could continue to put price action up for some time. And, uh, and maybe bulls will come to the rescue. So I hope you enjoy this video. If you did, please hit the like button below. It would mean a lot to me. And please, 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 please hit the subscribe button. If you like this content, leave a comment telling me, you know, you know, telling me what you liked about it. And if this video gets a good reaction, I will make more stuff like this. Like I say, I'm a noob. I'm a rookie. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. But I do make a living from one of the hardest things in the world to make a living from. I'm, prof I'm a professional gambler. It ain't easy. I do have an analytical mind. An analytical mind. Analytical. Don't even if, know if I'm saying that properly. I do have an obsessive personality. An analytical mind. 
I'm very passionate about this stuff. I see a lot of opportunity and I'm a bit of a geek and uh, I go deep down rabbit holes learning about this stuff. Like I say, I do earn a living uh, as a professional gambler, which you know requires a lot of analytical skills. So maybe I have something to offer when it comes to stuff like this. Let me know what you think. Um, you know, thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. Love you all. Take care. I will see you in the next one. Have a great week.